things that hopefully that you've uh, covered before, but just a little refresher. So what we've already learned uh, in this course are some new standard derivatives. Okay, and that's them here as a wee reminder. If we differentiate e to the x, we get the same function e to the x. If we differentiate log x, we get 1 over x. And if we differentiate tan x, we get sec squared x. That's a, a sample. We've learned a few more. But there's a few uh, ones that are the more common ones that we're going to use. Therefore, because integration is anti-differentiation, the process by which we um, find the inverse rule, then it stands to reason that our answers here uh, will integrate back to where we started, as long as, of course, we include a constant of integration. So that being said, we can say that the integral of e to the x is also, with respect to x, is e to the x plus the constant of integration. The integral of 1 over x with respect to x is the log x plus c, and the integral of 6 squared x is tan squared x plus c. Okay, so we just hold these in our standard integrals as we do sine x, tan x, and all these others. So let's do it. Um, oops, before we do that, just a wee uh, reminder that the kind of chain rule idea that we used for sine and cos, where we've got a composite function, also applies uh, to these ones. Again, it looks a wee bit uh, complicated, but we just need to remember to effectively divide our new integral by the the derivative of the inside function. Uh, one little thing which um, kind of it, it is important and it's not, see when this the, when you're integrating um, a, a, func a linear uh, where the, the denominator is a linear term, a term of multiple of x and we use the log of x as our integral we should technically uh, put a modulus signs to in other words to make sure that it's a positive value because you can't actually find the log of a negative number so we tend to do that some people just put brackets around a function like that we should really put the uh, the absolute value uh, with the two parallel lines okay if you don't at this level it's not the end of the world um, but to be proper if you want to be proper you put the absolute signs in. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of examples and see if we can apply this new learning. The integral of e to the power negative 3x, well already that's a composite function, uh, so we're talking about the idea of the integral of e to the x being e to the x. So the integral of e to the negative 3x, we just write down the answer, in other words, the first thing we do is we write down the function unchanged because that's what integrating an exponential function does. It doesn't change. However, that's not the final answer. Because it's a composite function, we then have to divide by the derivative of this inside function here. Negative 3x uh, differentiates to negative 3. We've still got a constant of integration, so we could write the answer as instead of divided by negative 3, oh, glitch there, we could write our answer as negative a third e to the negative 3x plus c. Okay, All right, when it comes to b, we've got a term that looks at the integral of 1 over x with respect to x is the log of x. Okay, so what's that got to do with this one? Well, first of all, the 3 here is a multiplier. It's a constant multiplier. So what we can think of doing is removing it from the integration. You don't have to physically do that, but certainly that's what we do. We don't take the 3 into account. It's still a multiplier, but then we don't have to think of it in the integration. We know the integral of 1 over x is the log of x. Um, so what we have to do then is to introduce a log, and it's the log of whatever the denominator is. Here's our modulus signs here, the, the absolute value. Um, except that we can't just uh, write that down. We, it, because it's a composite function, we then have to divide by the derivative of 4x minus 1, which is 4. We've got a constant of integration. Don't ever forget that. 
And so we could say that the answer is 3 quarters times the log of 4x plus 1 plus c. Good. And the last one, I'm just going to squeeze that over a wee bit there so we can get room in here. Uh, the integral of 5, 6 squared, pi over 2 minus 3x, a lot, a lot going on there. With respect to x, we know that the integral of 6 squared x is tan x. So we're going to bring in a tan here. Again, the 5 is uh, it's a constant term. We could rewrite it outside, but we don't need to, uh, as long as you remember what's going on. So we're still going to have our 5 in our answer. Uh, 6 squared x integrates to tan x. But of course, it's not just x. It's pi over 2 minus 3x. We've got to divide by the derivative of pi over 2 minus 3x. Remember that pi is a constant. It's the x term that's the variable here. So pi over 2 will differentiate to 0, and we're left with negative 3 plus c as our um, constant of integration. So we can simplify it. You notice that I always just draw a line and do my dividing. Uh, very big and bold underneath the function when we're doing the, uh, the chain rule type idea, and then we can simplify it. I just find it's an easier way to deal with it. Don't try and do too much in your head. And we end up with that. Negative 5 thirds times the tan of pi over 2 minus 3x plus a constant of integration. So when we've got these new standard integrals, we use them in exactly the same way as the ones that we did before in example 1. Okay, go and practice that.